So Ableton have just kind of secretly dropped a few new Max for Live devices in their beta program. Uh, these are a collection of Max for Live sequencer devices. And in this video, what I want to do is take a quick look at them. I've kind of taken a bit of a look at um, what they do, how they work. But in this video, I kind of want to do a bit more of like a first impressions, show you through the devices and show you potentially some use cases for these different sequences as well. So let's dive right in. Also, sorry, there's a bunch of seagulls in the background. Uh, I can't really do much about that. Okay, cool. So first up, we have the Rhythmic Steps device. And this is basically a four lane Max for Live sequencer that is designed specifically for working mainly with drum kits or drum racks inside of Ableton Live. We can see here, it's kind of four different lanes. Each of these different lanes corresponds to a pad on a drum rack. And by default, we have this kind of chance section open up here. So all of these different steps here equate to basically the chance that a particular note on that pad will play. So we can see here we've got this note firstly selected for the bass drum, or uh, the bottom left pad here. So if I make this 100% here and 100% here, then I just start my transport, we're going to start hearing this bass drum on the first and third beat of every bar. I could say now add in some more notes here, maybe this particular beat here, here and here, and have these at kind of like a less than 100% chance that these particular notes will play. So you can kind of get this like generative randomized pattern, which is really cool. Let's go ahead now and add some more notes here. I could add like a snare drum onto the second and third beats. And again, add like some lower chances that they'll play on some different notes. And let's go ahead and do it with uh, some of these hi-hats as well. So we've got a closed hi-hat. You'll see by default, they kind of map to like bass drum, snare drum, closed hi-hat, and then uh, we've got a hand clap here. Let's change this one to the open hi-hat by just clicking up on here. It's a little bit hard to change the uh, pad that's being played, but uh, you kind of get used to it. So let's go ahead and add in some closed hi-hats, 100%. Let's add some open hi-hats, maybe like make them a little bit less chances here and there. And so we can see there that these open hi-hats aren't playing much. Let's actually turn off those chances there. Let's switch to the alt pad. And so this alt pad is basically, as I understand it, effectively like an alternative pad that can have a chance of playing every so often. So let's now have it so that like kind of 50% of the time, roughly on every single step, we have a chance of triggering the uh, open hi-hat, which is the alt pad here, instead of the closed hi-hat. Let's reduce the chances here a little bit. That's a little bit too intense. That is pretty cool. And so then obviously we've got the chance tab, we've got the alt tabs. And so you could have like alternate snare drums, alternate kick drums, alternate hi-hats, alternate hand claps. And then we always obviously of course have the velocity tab too. So here we could like randomize the velocity of say the closed hi-hats. So I've got two different randomize options. I could randomize really quite heavily with this massive randomize here or kind of just a lesser randomize here. Let's randomize a bit heavily and then add some lesser randomization. That's pretty cool. And so let's go ahead now and I'm gonna switch back to the chance section here. And let's, again, change this to the hand clap and let's have this be a different length. So I could change this to be like a length of maybe, let's say, uh, let's, let's say seven. Let's be a little bit different and weird here. And let's add some chances that this hand clap is gonna play here. Obviously it's getting pretty intense, but you kind of start to see how we could use this now as a bit more of a sequencer. There's obviously slide here as well for us being able to use slide modulation if you have some kind of kit that is MPE supported, or we have a roll section here, which allows us to add like rolls or kind of faster timing divisions to certain steps. Uh, let's kind of, kind of do this here. So a chance that these are gonna be 30 second notes.
that's pretty cool. And then there's a whole bunch of other things here as well. We've got the ability to like mute certain sequences. We can time delay offset. So if we want to add like a little bit of um, offset to the, let's add a little bit of offset to the claps just in milliseconds. And then this last bit here is the timing which is really cool. It allows us to control like per step swing. So we can see here this first knob is the like swing or the timing offset of the first step in the sequence. And then once again, we have kind of, you know, the timing offset of different steps in the sequence here. So we're able to kind of like add some very slight timing adjustment to different steps. And I could make this eight steps instead of four. And so now we have this kind of very slight timing offset uh, to give it like a little bit more swing and groove to the pattern. Obviously that's getting really, really hectic uh, now, but you kind of start to get the idea. I think this is a really fun little device. And uh, I'm also aware that this has really deep push integration. Uh, I don't have my Ableton push with me whilst I'm traveling, but if we click on this little button here, we can see how this maps to the Ableton push. So if you have an Ableton push, uh, particularly the Ableton Push 3, I imagine this is really, really well integrated with the push here. Beyond that, I think this is a really cool device. And of course, if you wanted more than four different lanes, you can of course group this to an instrument rack and maybe create like a duplicate here. And then just pitch this down using the pitch MIDI device after there by how many semitones you needed to pitch it down or up to uh, kind of add in some extra lanes here. Obviously that starts to get a little bit more complicated, but it's totally doable and all of these should stay synced across everything as well. I should mention that there's really not much information about these devices on the beta or in the download. I don't know what additions these are going to be coming in, if it's going to be a paid pack download, it's just going to be a part of Suite. Um, I don't even know if these are going to be coming with Live 12.1, I assume so, but um, yeah, they are available there if you're part of the beta program to download and have a play around with. Okay, so up next we have the Step Up, which is basically a step sequencing arpeggiator, which is really, really fun. Um, and let's kind of dive right into having a look at it. So here, let's just turn this off. This is a sound that I've got to just run this through. Great, so let's turn on the Step Up and by default, basically what happens is we just jump up in octaves based on the note that we're holding. I can add more octaves here if I want, so I can have it jump up two or three octaves. Or I can have it go down octaves. Or up and down. Or I could even have it randomize the octaves that it jumps in. Now, of course, that's just holding one note. If I start to hold two notes at once, let's turn down the octaves back to one here. We're now playing those two notes on the original octave and on the octave up as well, randomizing them. And then we get the ability to start playing around with some other really cool things too. So we have here per step velocity. So I've got a hand and just added some velocity modulation to the pluck sound so that the velocity is controlling the filter. And so you can hear there that a lower velocity, lower filter, and we can randomize this velocity within like a certain range. So I can click and drag here and then click on this little randomize here. I could turn on or off steps by clicking on them down the bottom. We can change the direction of the sequence. So currently it's going forwards. I can have it going backwards. I can have it alternate. Or I could even change the loop length of the sequence so that it's only say seven steps. And then we have the ability to do all this for obviously the length, chance, ratcheting, transposition, and even a just max for live mapping as well. So we can kind of map this step sequence to effectively anything we want, which is really, really cool. So if I added like a reverb, turn down the dry wet, I could map these different steps here to the dry wet of the reverb and have it open up on certain steps. which I think is super cool. And then of course we can add some transposition. I might wanna transpose these up or down.
And the cool thing about having transposition is we also have the ability for this device to be scale aware in Ableton Live 12, just by clicking on this little scale or use current scale button, which means that now it's going to follow the scale of the currently playing clip or the kind of default scale set in the top. If you want to learn more about scale awareness, you can check out my video, which will be linked somewhere on the screen. And then you've got basic kind of arpeggiator controls, such as the rate of the arpeggiator. We could use triplets, we can use dotted values, we can have it synced to Live's transport control, or we can run it freely at a different BPM, and we also have a swing percentage as well. Then you also have things like being able to change the arpeggiator direction. So if it's played up, down, played as played, randomized, or uh, even in a kind of chord trigger is what I assume this is. And you've also got a hold control like you do in the typical arpeggiator, but this is a really fun arpeggiator to play around with. Again, it does work as an arpeggiator. It's not a step sequencer necessarily, but it can open up some really, really awesome, you know, kind of happy accidents if you start playing around with these and start kind of randomizing the different chants and lengths and ratcheting and add some mapping as well. It's, it's really, really fun to play around with. By the way, if you're keen on learning more about music production from me outside of just my free YouTube videos, I also offer one-on-one -on -one lessons, monthly mentorship and online courses, all of which you can find out more about on my website, matttinklermusic.com. Okay, so last but not least, we have the SQ device which is more of a typical kind of step sequencer with some really interesting extra kind of functionality. So here I've got like a little acid sound. Let's just turn off this SQ so I can show you what this sound sounds like. Turn it back on. And so what's really cool about this is we have the ability to, again, go between eight or 16 steps here. Let's stick with eight for the moment. And we can choose the start and end position of the different steps. And we can also turn steps on or off here. My zooming is making this look a little bit kind of uh, out of line here, but rest assured, if you kind of change the zoom, this looks a little bit more nice. And so let's go ahead here and randomize the pitch of each of these different steps. We can come down to the pitch section here and click on this little random button. So that'll randomize it within, I think, 12 semitones or yeah, plus or minus whatever this range set above it is. And then we can just play it by either pressing the play button on the sequencer, I guess, or not, or just playing our transport control. Now with the sound I've got here, because it's kind of like a mono sound, I'm just gonna go ahead and reduce the length of all the steps at once here by using this control here. So this reduces the length of all the different steps. Let's reduce this down to like about 15 to 20, I think is a good range for this. And now I want this to play all kind of down a little bit more of an octave. So I'm gonna to go to the octave here and pull the octave of them all down to let's say two octaves. Let's go ahead and just change some of the parameters here on this device. And let's pull up the octaves here. And then we also have the ability to change velocity as well. So we can change the velocity of each of these different steps. And then if I go to my synth here and just send like velocity to control cutoff and decay and maybe volume as well. And so we can see obviously pitch, octave, velocity, and length here, but I can also switch to the second page. And now I can start to see time shift, ratcheting, and condition as well, which is kind of a little bit hard to understand what it does, but it's basically, I imagine like the chance that that particular step will play every number of sequences or something like that. Cool, let's go ahead and set this to 16 steps, turn on some of these additional steps here, and then let's go back to page one and what's now cool about this is we can unlink these lanes from one another and start to have free running different step sequences. So I could go ahead and unlink this octave control here and so have it length between say one, step one and step five. I could do the same thing here with the velocity control. 
step one to step 10. Uh, we could maybe randomize some of these lengths here to, and once again, unlink them, have that doing that. And we could even unlink the pitch and have this going back and forth, but have that go all the way maybe 15 here. And then once again, we have the ability to snap these all to a certain scale. So currently it's C chromatic. We can choose the scale here from the menus if we want to, or we can just have it be scale aware. So currently our scale is set to C major. I could set this to E minor with my scale selector up the top. And something cool that I noticed as well with this is the scale will actually also work if we set it from the device. So I could set the scale here in scale aware mode to A minor, and that will actually change our default scale as well, which is uh, which is pretty cool. Anyway, let's have a listen to this now, quantized to A minor. And you can hear now it's starting to get just like a little bit crazy. But again, we have our typical uh, rate controls and stuff like that over on the left too. We have a resync so we can resync all of the clocks. Um, and then there's a bunch of randomized buttons here too. And I've heard this one has some really cool push integration. Two. So that was just a quick little overview of these three different sequences. If you're part of the beta program, you can go and download them from the beta releases section in Center Code. I've been having a lot of fun playing around with these. These are some really cool little Max Live devices. Again, I don't know when they're going to be released, what editions they're going to come out in or anything. But if you do have access to the beta program, I highly recommend you go download them, check them out, and then come back here, comment below, and let me know what you thought of them. Otherwise, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something, and I'll see you all in the next video.